Welcome to this video where I will be going over the GCSE Maths paper two for Edexcel. I will be reviewing the difficulty of this paper and at the end of this video, I will be providing you with a list of topics that you should focus on for paper number three. Before we start, however, it's worth noting that I won't be able to show you any of the questions on the screen. And the second thing, if you haven't already done so, please go and subscribe to the channel and make sure that the bell notifications are on. So go ahead and do that. Now, most people have already said that this paper they found far better than paper one. I'm gonna go look through this and I'm gonna give you my verdict. Right, so let's begin. I've written down some notes here, so I'm gonna be referring referring to my notes as I talk to you. Let's go, let's begin. Now, when you open up this paper, some of the students may have been thrown off by the very first question. It's not what we usually expect to be the very first question on a maths paper. It starts off straight from the get-go with a Pythagoras question. And this may have caused some uh, uneasiness in some students because they're expecting all the LCM stuff or you know finding the multiples or something like that. But from the very beginning, this exam paper is showing you exactly how serious it is. The second question, however, was more like what we would expect at the beginning of a paper. All of the product of prime factors, LCM, that sort of stuff. The first question that might provide a bit of a challenge for some students would have been question four. This is a ratio question, which wasn't your straightforward ratio question. The students were expected to sort of work backwards to find the total. And this may have proved to be a bit of a challenge to students who are more used to the straightforward ratio questions. Question five goes into the quadratic graphs. I was a little bit surprised by this question being so early on in the paper. But then again, we got question one, which had the Pythagoras. So it's kind of setting the theme for this exam paper that, you know what? You're not expecting the traditional easy questions, medium questions, and all the hard questions at the end. So this quadratic graph question, simple, putting the values in and then plotting it. Usually it follows up with finding the roots, but this particular question required you to draw another line and find the intersection points. Question six and seven, not bad, straightforward. Seven was the trapezium one. You know, the angles in trapezium, you set up the um, al algebraic uh, equations and that's relatively straightforward. Um, then we move on to question number eight. Now, this question may have thrown some students off because a student can make an assumption that this picture is drawn to scale. And there's nothing in the question that says that this isn't drawn to scale. So this is a, a misunderstanding, a potential misunderstanding some students may make. They might just measure it with a ruler and then multiply with what they're given as a scale factor and think that that's, that's the answer. So some students, because of this, may have struggled with this question because the question doesn't mention that this diagram is not drawn to scale. And some students may have made an unconscious connection with scale drawings. Question 10 was another right angle triangle question where you had to use Sokotoa to form algebraic equations and then solve it where you're given two triangles. Um, again, this isn't something that we have seen in the previous exam papers, so it may have been some challenge for some students. The questions that followed after that were nice questions. We, we had cumulative frequency, inverse proportion, shading regions. Uh, some students did mention shading regions. Uh, it was a you know, tricky one, but you know what, if you've practiced this, plenty of this in your revision, then this was a lovely question of shading regions. Uh, then we had velocity time graphs. Uh, we had the rationalizing the denominator of a third. Now this one, you may not have been used to seeing a, a variable in the denominator, but if you know you're rationalizing, multiply the top and the bottom, making that uh, integer number also into a fraction and then cross multiply and doing all of that, then it should have been quite straightforward for those students. Mind you, this is question 15. So we're talking about the st uh, students are aiming for grade seven and this should be right up your street if you are a grade seven student. So I don't see any problem there. Question 16, we had the quadratic inequality. So it's already factorized for you. You just have to find the values, the limits, draw your graph and find out what the range of values are. So that was a nice question. Then we move to question 17. Now some students did mention question 17 was a tricky one, but I've had a look at this and actually it's a nice question. Yes, you may not have seen, uh, you know, three shapes together linked like this. If you got sufficient revision done on this topic, then it should have been a straightforward question for you to do. But the one after that, question 18, the probability one, even one of my top students said to me that they found this quite difficult. Now, where I can see some students struggling with this is the fact that it's a non-replacement probability and also how they will present their data, whether they do it in a tree diagram or whether they list it out. Sometimes a tree diagram can get quite messy when you have three things, three sets of branches to draw. But 
you know, this is something that I would do, maybe draw the tree diagram and then find out what I need from there and it's easier to see, but others may just decide to list it out. So whichever way you do it, you shouldn't have any problems with that. It's just remembering uh, the, the numbers that will follow uh, using non-replacement. But generally this question I felt was okay. I just felt that it might have been quite messy in the head and on paper to put your solutions out and do all your work in. Question 19 with the vectors, another messy one because this involved a K value. Now, look, if I'm honest with you, some students did come out and say, oh, the vector one was really difficult. But I felt that this was actually a better vector question than some of the hard vector questions that could have come up. You know, the ones where you find uh, two different routes for a path and then you've got the K value, the ratios involved. This was a nice vector question compared to those kind of questions. So I don't know why a lot of students complained about that. Perhaps they didn't put enough revision into vectors. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do, you know, this looks quite straightforward forward in my opinion but then again you know I'm not the student you guys are you guys let me know what you think whether this vector question was hard that hard or not what well, I felt it was all right okay but um, I'd love to hear your comments on that number 20 turning point completing the square um, I wrote down some notes for that one that was fine that was fine uh, the only thing is to remember that when you're completing the square the coefficient of x squared needs to be one so you need to factorize uh, any number next to the x squared out and of, of course make sure that you divide all the other numbers in between um, in the expression as well so that was fine uh, question 21 transformations of graphs nice question we can move on from that the last question the circle theorem now you might have missed it it was on the back of the paper uh, but question 22 circle theorem some students did say that they left it out uh, probably because of running out of time or hopefully they didn't forget about it they didn't you know they knew that it was there but it was a proof circle theorem question and if you know your proofs uh, you can comfortably apply them. We have seen this question before in, in past papers, probably not likely in past papers actually, maybe some practice papers, uh, but it was it was something that's previously been, uh, been done before, so um, I felt that was good. All right, so that's what my review is of this paper. I think generally it was a nice paper, it was a good paper, far better than paper one, If and I did say that paper one was decent as well. So what can we expect in paper three now? Uh, I've written down a list of topics that I believe haven't come up in paper one, and two so if you want to get a pen and pad ready you can write these down and make sure that you practice plenty of questions around these topics so we've got quadratic simultaneous equations I haven't seen one of those yet we've got algebraic fractions and solving uh, equations solving algebraic equations we have seen that in paper one something but not quite the thing that we expect so still practice that algebraic fractions and solving uh, algebraic fractions we haven't seen iteration so make sure you practice iteration capture recapture that's not come up yet this is an easy one frequency polygons uh, we, we haven't seen in any of the papers yet so you know put a bit of practice on that one box plots uh, that's another one 3d trigonometry and pythagoras we haven't seen that so make sure you get practice on that one uh, bearings including uh, possibly trigonometry uh, make sure you practice that we haven't really seen the proper traditional sine cosine rules the sine area rules so keep practicing on those uh, compound interest reverse percentages we haven't seen one of those questions perhaps where you compare two different things like two different banks or two different holiday destinations or something like that where they're giving you different deals uh, get plenty of practice on that um, Estimated mean, although estimated mean did come up on the foundation paper, it hasn't come up on the higher paper, so I don't know whether we should expect that or not. And finally, the last one is uh, areas of sectors and arc lengths. We still haven't seen any questions related to circles or sectors, so practice that. If I've missed any, then, you know, there's always students who always leave them in the comments, so please do that. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I'll see you guys for paper free. Goodbye for now.